I want to start off. Uh, I'm going to work our way through uh, Unit Four Worksheet Three, uh, but first I want to start off with an alternate explanation of this idea of color coding uh, that we're going to work our way through. Um, first of all, uh, the big picture idea here is that we've seen already that uh, when there are differences in uh, pressure, like say if we think about air pressure, uh, air moves from areas of high pressure to areas of low pressure. Um, and so when uh, that's what wind is, is when uh, the air is moving from a place where the air is more tightly packed to a place where it's not as highly packed. And so air always moves from higher pressures to lower pressures. And the same is true with electric charges. We could think about a pressure of electric charge, um, where when we think about Ben Franklin's version of charge flow, we're thinking about positive stuff. And so if we've got lots and lots and lots of positive charge altogether, then we're looking at a high pressure of charge, or the technical term for that is a high electric potential. Um, and where we're missing that positive charge, then we have a very low pressure, we have a very low electric potential. And what a battery does uh, through chemical reactions is it keeps the positive terminal of the battery always at a high electric pressure, a high electric potential, and the negative terminal is at a low pressure. So the negative terminal of the battery is missing that charge, and the positive terminal of the battery has a lot of extra. Now, I also have, I'm going to connect to uh, what I'm looking at here on the screen is I've got a tube and another tube and another tube. Those are connecting wires. And I've got here, I've got a light bulb and another light bulb. And I drew some purple C's to represent charges all over the place. And you can see if I move some of these C's out of the way, uh, you can see I've got a little swirly, twirly, loopy, uh, filament in each of those two bulbs. But there's just a normal amount, an ordinary amount of charge that's already existent in the wires. Uh, we do know that the th the charged things, we know that they're electrons now, um, but didn't know that until like the 20th century. Um, we know that those things already exist in the connecting wire, already exist in the filaments. And so there's just a normal pressure of those things. And so I mark yellow, the color yellow represents just a normal pressure. And so all this stuff is at a normal pressure until I connect the battery to the two ends of uh, the circuit to complete the loop. And so when I connect this red, red represents a high pressure. When I connect that red high pressure positive terminal of the battery to this wire. This connecting wire is a big wide open space and so it's really easy for charges to fill in really easily. And so that makes this wire be at a higher pressure. Now because this filament is narrow, the filament is a tight squeeze, then those charges don't have such an easy time coming over into this yellow wire. And so now there's a difference in electric pressure, electric potential between this connecting wire, because this connecting wire is connected to the positive terminal of the battery. And that positive terminal of the battery makes this wire fill up with extra charges. Meanwhile, the negative terminal of the battery is at a very low pressure. And so that's going to pull charges out of this. It's going to pull charges out of the wire that it's connected to. Now, what a battery does um, is through chemical reactions, a battery is able to maintain the same pressure differences, the same potential differences, 
all the time between the two ends of the battery. So through a chemical reaction that keeps on happening, then that chemical reaction maintains the low pressure and moving those charges from the low pressure blue to the high pressure red. And so those charges through chemical reactions, we still have a low pressure on the blue side and a high pressure on the red side. And how those chemical reactions are able to do that is a story for another time, but it is really interesting. Now, what we have going on here in our wires is I've got a high pressure in this wire and I've got, that's not yellow anymore. This wire is now blue because that's come to be at a low pressure because those charges in this connecting wire were easily pulled out um, because connecting wire is really, really, really easy to move through. We've already explored that. It's a big wide open space. And so it's really easy for it to come to be at the same pressure as whatever it's connected to. So over here, I've got a high pressure in one wire and just a normal pressure in that middle wire. And that creates a difference in pressure from one side of the light bulb to the other side of the light bulb. And a difference in pressure for charges, just like a difference in pressure for air, it's more tightly packed on the red side than it is on the yellow side. And so charges are gonna move through, and this is gonna be a slow process. Charges are gonna move from this wire through the filament into this middle wire. Of course, what's gonna be happening at the same time is that there's a difference in pressure between this yellow wire and this blue wire. And so just as quickly as charges creep in to this middle wire through the left bulb, they're gonna creep out of this middle wire through the right bulb. And so very gradually, we're gonna have charges from the red wire are gonna creep through this filament and into the yellow wire, but just as rapidly, charges are gonna be creeping out of the yellow wire through this filament and into the blue wire. Now they would go from this blue wire to the battery and they came out of the positive side of the battery into the red wire. And that chemical reaction again, maintains the same pressure difference between the low pressure side on the negative and the high pressure side on the positive. Now, how is all this useful for us? we're going to do some color coding. And I find that the color coding is extremely helpful for understanding pressures and differences in pressures and building some sense about why would charges move or not move from one place to another. Now, figure A here on worksheet three has no battery at all. I've just got stuff. I've got a capacitor, which is just big old pieces of conductor. And I've got light bulbs, which are conductors with a little glass insulator around it. But there's no battery. Everything is just ordinary stuff. And it's all just at a normal pressure. So everything's yellow here. And if I look at this bulb here on top, if I look right here, then I can see that I've got on the left side, I've got yellow. On the right side, I've got yellow. There's not a difference in pressure. And with no difference in pressure, then that's not going to cause charges to move. And we're all completely unsurprised that charges don't move through a circuit without any reason. There's no battery. There's nothing pushing them. But we move on to B. And now things get more interesting. The positive terminal of the battery is red. Red is the highest pressure. Uh, we always draw our, our highest pressure on any one drawing is going to be red. And our middle normal pressure is yellow. And our very lowest pressure, lower than normal, is blue. And we're going to add in two more colors. Uh, orange is higher pressure than normal but not as high as red. 
and green is going to be lower than normal pressure, but not as low as blue. So our sequence of colors would be red is the highest pressure, and then orange is high, but not as high. Yellow is normal pressure. Green is low, but not all the way low. And blue is the lowest pressure. And you notice that that sequence of colors matches up with the sequence of rainbow colors. Um, this is a limited thing. Uh, we can have more changes in pressure than just four. And I'm thinking four because red to orange, orange to yellow, yellow to green, green to blue. There are four differences there if I've got five shades of color. And things can get more complex than that. Uh, and sometimes I find myself feeling the limitations of only using five colors, but also we don't want to overcomplicate too much. So five colors is enough. Anyway, red is the highest pressure, and that is the battery positive terminal always maintains that high pressure. And because the connecting wire is such a wide open space, then that's going to come to be at the same high pressure as the positive terminal of the battery pretty much instantly. And the negative terminal of the battery is the very lowest pressure always. And whenever I draw these, I always start with positive terminal of the battery and any connecting wires directly connected to it are red, negative terminal is blue, and any connecting wires directly linked to the negative terminal are blue. So highest pressure on the positive side, lowest pressure on the negative side. But now what about the right side of this diagram? Well, I've got a huge wide open space on each of these capacitor plates. Let's remember that capacitors have a very, very, very large surface area on either plate, and then we roll it up into that cylinder shape. But there's a huge area to fill up with charge. And so it's going to take some time, even if charges move through that light bulb and onto the capacitor plates, it's going to take some time for that to fill up. And so the moment when I first connect, the very instant that I complete this circuit, well, the there hasn't been enough time to increase the pressure on this huge positive plate here. And so it's still at a normal pressure. It's still at a yellow pressure. And so this whole right side up here, the upper right side, is all yellow. Likewise, charges are going to move. They're going to, but haven't had time yet to move from this negative plate through the bottom bulb and back into the negative side of the battery. And since charges haven't had time to leave this negative plate yet, it's still also at just a regular pressure, a normal pressure. And so on the right side, they're both yellow still. Now, if I look at the left side versus the right side of the top bulb, I've got a red pressure to a yellow pressure. So the left side of the bulb is at a higher pressure than the right side of the bulb. And that's going to cause charges to move. We always move charges from high pressure to low pressure. And so charges are going to move from left to right through that bulb. Now, as we pile up charge on the top plate of this capacitor, that's going to push positive stuff. We know that charges get pushed away by same sign charges. So if I've got positive charge piling up on one plate, that's going to push positive charge off the other plate, which would leave it negative after positive charges leave the bottom plate. So charge will leave here. And it's right now at a normal yellow pressure, but the other side is at a lower blue pressure. And so charges always move from higher to lower pressures. And in this case on the bottom, that would be moving from the normal pressure to the low pressure. And so charges will move from right to left through that bottom bulb. Now moving on to part C, and I'm just going to quickly fill in always 
positive terminal of battery is red and any connecting wires. And the negative terminal is blue along with any connecting wires. But now this has had some time to charge. And so now this isn't gonna be yellow anymore, but this is gonna be orange. Orange, let's remember, is the higher pressure. It's not as high as red, but it's higher than the normal pressure yellow. So this is when charging has begun, but not finished. It does take some uh, amount of time. It's pretty quick, but it does take some amount of time. And so some short time after we start charging, this capacitor is starting to load up with positive charges on that top plate. So it's at a higher pressure than normal, but not as high as the positive terminal of the battery. So I make that orange and I can do the same thing on the negative side. Down here, since some positive charges have left, then it's going to be at a low pressure, but not all the way low, not blue low. And so I use green. And so now there's a difference in pressure between these two plates of the capacitor. There's a difference in pressure between on the top bulb between the left side and the right side, but it's not as much as it used to be. I used to have a difference from red to yellow. Now I have a difference from red to orange. And the difference from red to orange isn't as great as the difference from red to yellow. Likewise, I used to go from yellow to blue here, but now I'm going from green to blue, and that's a smaller difference. And so with a smaller pressure difference, then I'm gonna have a smaller rate of flow through uh, this bulb. Um, another way of looking at that is that we have less flow through the top bulb because now the top plate of the capacitor being positively charged is pushing back a little bit, just like we saw in activity two, pushing back leads to a reduced flow. And on the bottom side, then uh, we have a lesser difference here again as well. Now in part D, in part D, I'll get it sooner or later, positive terminal of the battery is always red, negative terminal of the battery is always blue, along with whatever connecting wire. But now, when charging is completed, what that means is that we no longer have any flow. And if we no longer have any flow, then that must mean that we don't have a difference in pressure. To not have a difference in pressure means that the colors have to be the same. So I can see I stop the flow of charge when I have a red pressure on the left side of the bulb and a red pressure on the right side of the bulb. With no difference in pressure, even if it's a high pressure, with no difference in pressure from one place to another, there's no reason for those charges to move. And because the capacitor, this top plate is fully charged, then it's at a higher, higher, higher pressure. Or another way that we could phrase this is that the capacitor will charge up until the capacitor plates come to be at the same colors as the battery. And now we have no difference in pressure across either bulb. We have no flow through either bulb and the capacitor is fully charged. So thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.